No. Can everybody hear? No. Okay. Um, all I would suggest um, is that um, if I to start by saying, although this is an open meeting for members of the public to come along to, it's not a meeting where we can, um, where the public can take part in. But what I would say to you is that uh, it's obviously quite a long room. Um, so if anybody can't hear at any point, if you wouldn't mind, rather than shout, if you wouldn't mind just raising your hand, um, and that would be really helpful. And for those of us in the room that are using mics, if I can suggest that you bring it fairly closely to you, um, and that you remember to speak into the mic. Okay, thank you. Um, and on that point, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody here today, and some people um, I know that have stepped in. Thank you, Jerry, stepping in, and um, Adrian, I believe, Adrian. Um, and welcome to the Children's Committee, who um, who are sitting in. Now, with Children's, you are allowed to um, speak and ask a question, um, but if there are any votes that take place, you won't be allowed to vote. So if I can just make that clear. So um, I have Jerry Ellis, also who sent apologies, and Andrew Hodgson. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, uh, sorry, Andrew Gardner. I've got Andrew Hodgson here. You changed. Nice. <laughs> 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 Standing in. Um, and Karen Cryer from Healthwatch has also sent her apologies. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do to start with is just outline how today's calling meeting will run um, and, um, and we'll then follow the agenda from there. So I will be chairing the meeting in accordance with the Council's constitution and the calling procedure. A copy of that can be found in page one of your agenda pack. In accordance with Standing Order 35 of the Council's Constitution, only one overview and scrutiny committee can review any particular calling matter. And in this instance, the decision has been made that this calling should be dealt with by the Adult Care and Health Overview and Scrutiny Committee. However, members of the Children's Overview and Scrutiny Committee, as I've already said, have been invited to attend the meeting with adults and it's my proposal that members of children's should be allowed to ask questions, but that you won't be allowed to vote. So the procedure will follow, um, follow the, um, this layout. Firstly, I'll invite the lead signatory to set out the reasons for the calling, and then invite the cabinet member to explain the reasons for their decision. We'll also hear evidence from several other witnesses on behalf of the calling and the decision maker. So firstly, I will be inviting the lead signatory and the decision maker to summarise the key points of evidence given in support of their respective positions. Each speaker will be given five minutes and I would ask that the speakers to respect those times. And I've asked our clerk to time the speeches so that everyone gets a fair opportunity to speak and that the procedure is conducted in accordance with the principles of natural justice. At the end of each person's evidence, there will be an opportunity for members of the committee to ask questions, but can I please remind members that if they wish to make comments or statements, that these should be saved for the debate at the end, and only specific questions should be asked to the witnesses. At the end of the debate, the committee may take one of the following courses of actions. Number one, refer the decision back to Cabinet Committee, setting out in writing the nature of its concerns. Number two, refer back to the Council. And number three, uphold the decision so that if the Overview and Scrutiny Committees agrees with the initial decision of the relevant senior officer, that they may instruct them to carry on without delay. I would request that if, when it comes to moving any motion or any amendment at the end of the debate, that members write that motion down on a piece of paper and hand it to me so that I can be clear about the wordings being moved. And can I also just remember members, remind members that in accordance with Standing Order 12, Section 15, points of order can only be raised in relation to a breach of standing orders or statutory provision, and that the member raising any point of order must specify the standing order they are referring to and the way in which they consider it to be broken. 
Okay, and on that point, um, I will move to. Specifically, the pooled funding agreement equates to around £10 million of the monies for the children budget. 
6.8 million from the complex care packages of children and young people, and 3.3 million of the children's public health, and that includes health visitors, primary nursing. I therefore would urge the chair of this committee to refer this specific budget proposal back to the Children and Families Committee. As elected members, we certainly aren't experts in these areas, and although our backgrounds and experience may well enable us to have some insight, we need to look to the experts in these fields to guide us through such a complex framework. Today I've asked both the social care expert and medical and legal expert to give us their opinions on this arrangement, and hopefully they will be able to answer the questions from members here today. I'm certainly not an expert, so I'll refer you to Yvonne Nolan and Derek Timmins for any questions you may have. I am sure they're better placed with them than I, but in the meantime, I do urge members to look in detail at this contract and the supporting appendices alongside our key points document. Now, the key points document I've brought today, which all it does is just enable you to see the highlighted issues with both the contract and the appendices, and I know, Julie, you've seen that, but are you happy for that to be distributed, or? Yes. So I have that for all members now. Thank you. Um, and with that, I'll hand back to Julie and the committee, and many thanks for hearing. Thank you, Kate. If you can just stay there for a moment while I see if members have any questions to ask. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. If I could just ask one question. Um, would it not have been possible for you to share this document with us previously? Because obviously we are busy listening now to witnesses. We won't be reading and listening. Um, just sorry about that, but we can't do everything. Uh, absolutely, Wendy, I totally agree. And, and I have made the same issues in committees, and I totally take responsibility for that. What's happened, I put the document together first on the paperwork that had come out for the 16th of October realised my error too late and had to go back and redo all of the page numbers in relation to those key points. So it is totally my responsibility, so I, I do apologise for that. Councillor Gilchrist. Yeah, if, uh, if a document is being circulated, could members have some time to read it at some convenient point? So it means we adjourn five minutes. Okay, would you prefer to do that now? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. If anybody wants to take a comfort break for five minutes or 25 past four, that's fine, thank you.